to one live. Francesco, how are you? Every, every no. time I talk with an Italian, uh, people immediately in Italy say, why two Italians are, are speaking in English? What, why is that? How dare? You know, I, I always think, man, yeah. I live in the UK for nine years. You, you, you live in Estonia. I live in Estonia, yeah, but uh, I'm actually half British. Right. So you, you know, and, and so, and if you want to talk about these topics and, uh, and you have, you know, a larger international audience, or I talk to an international audience, we, we cannot speak in Italian. Sorry, guys. Even if my English is <laughs> rubbish. Nobody's yeah, ever heard Italian. Italian. Thanks, Italian. Italian. <laughs> Francesco, really nice to meet you. Um, I always believe that um, it's very easy to chat with people when things are great. And uh, when think, but maybe something happened, like the, the recent hack, people mm, is a little bit more uh, cautious to speak, but I don't care. And I, and, uh, I, I really want to have a conversation with you about this NFT world, what Superfluid is doing and so on. But tell us a, a second about the hack, what you're doing, what's the situation? Yeah, so there was a vulnerability that was found in our code uh, on Tuesday. We found out basically as soon as we woke up, um, immediately, basically we, we found a patch, we built um, code to fix the patch, deployed that code. We, we took our, our system down for a couple of hours so people couldn't, Uh, do any operations in case you know the hacker uh, tried to hit again and uh, since then we've basically as I said we fixed the bug we've uh, created a compensation plan we've evaluated the damages we've spoken to everybody involved overall it wasn't uh, massive it could have been worse um, we were very cautious of uh, kind of new Um, new developments. We are we just put in place a bug bounty. So if any if there are any security researchers uh, that want to have a uh, have a look, there's up to two hundred thousand dollars for critical bounties. Right. And we are uh, organizing a new code audit. So we are doing some internal restructuring. But to be completely honest, hacks happen every day. Everybody mm -hmm. in uh, DeFi, everybody in the in the Web free space, at some point experiments a hack. Because the things we're building are new, they are right. built, they're, they're new technologies, you know, they work in different ways. It's impossible to build perfect code, right? And in, in the traditional Web 2, this isn't a big deal. You're, you know, you fix, you fix bugs, you, you, you just kind of push a fix. In Web 3, everything is immutable, right? And everything is final. So the moment the hacker took that money, there's no way for us to get it back. And right. this is painful. It hurts. But it's also part of why Web3 is so efficient, why Web3 is so powerful, right? So we have to live with this. We have to improve our security. Uh, but overall, we have to move forward and keep Got going. It. And I mentioned you'll, you'll compensate back the users or people who lost the money and you'll try to organize that, that part. Yes, yes. So we've, we've actually already, uh, so the same day, because, uh, so a lot of people are using Superfluid to pay their teams. Right. Right. And for that reason, it's very important for us to guarantee continuity, right? Every, uh, most of the people hit were businesses. They weren't individuals. So we had uh, some, you know, direct relationships. We were able to quickly find a compensation plan that made sense and uh, guarantee that those businesses could get back on their feet and you know, get back paying their employees, right? Because yeah. again, these were people's salaries. So we had to get that uh, done as quickly as possible. That said, you know, this hacker um, is being watched. We're doing what we can uh, and we're hoping that we'll be able to put some more pressure on them. We have offered $1 million to them to come clean, give back the rest, and they can keep $1 million as a wow. security bounty. Uh, so far, they have not replied. And, you know, if they want to be on the wrong side of history, we will do what we can to uh, pursue it. It's crazy, Francesco, how, how many acts, like huge. I mean, this is very small comparing with the big hack. I mean, Wormhole, it was like, I don't know, 200, 300 million uh, dollars. And uh, I mean, the other day was the Caesar of the 3.2 billion, uh, the, the old Bitfinex. Yeah. Uh, what I don't understand are, are two things. First is uh, if you hack into a system and you steal, I don't know, Bitcoin or Ether, how are you going to mm, 
wash that money because on blockchain, I mean, I can start yeah. tracking you. So I don't understand that. Yeah, that's a that's a very good uh, good question. So there's a couple of different ways. Uh, I'm not I'm not an expert in laundering. I really don't want it to look like I am. Well, uh, sure, but because no, but I uh, mean, from the security point of view, is a problem that you probably have to think about. Yeah. Yeah, and in the in the past few days, I've been speaking with quite a few people on the forensic side. So uh, you know, they've explained to me what is likely to happen with these funds. Right. And basically, what they've said is people are likely to use a service called Tornado Cash which right. um, is actually where the funds came from. So before performing the hack, the, the hacker needed uh, some money to pay for the operations, right? To pay for the gas. So right. the money actually, the money to pay that gas comes from Tornado Cash. Yeah. And now the proceeds of the hack are likely to go back to Tornado Cash. So Tornado Cash is basically a mixing system. You put yeah. money in, and then you take it out and it breaks the link between the sender and the receiver. Uh, and, you know, it's it's a great system for people who want anonymity, but obviously that makes it also a great system for people who want anonymity for bad reasons, right? So it's a, like a lot of things in Web3, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, absolutely. I, and do you think our um, um, criminal organizations, very well structured, like, like in Web2, I mean, I got... Uh, everyday scams, frauds, um, identity stolen, uh, cloning of my website, advertising campaign with my name uh, pointing to, I mean, this is an everyday business uh, that, that is going on. And basically, no one is doing anything, basically. Platforms, yeah, try to delete some account. But I mean, we're talking about a, a massive, huge business on Web2, yeah. scamming people and security hacking. Uh, do you think our criminal organization or here you also have, you know, one hacker that just goes in and yeah. try to grab the bag? I think there's different, there's different kinds of attacks that require different kinds of organizations. In, uh, in some cases, we've also received a kind of phishing attacks. We, we actually got some this year, which were very well crafted and, right. you know, make me think that they were probably very professional attackers. But what we saw the, this other time is more likely to be a single security researcher. Like these are people who know how smart contracts work very well. They're probably working in this full time, but they don't need a, a big organization, right? They, they can do all of this on their own. And right. then what they need is prob probably help getting the money out. That, on that side, they might need help, but executing the hack is very, it's almost trivial, right? Which is, is why it's so painful. Um, right. The cost for them to execute this is not so big. Interesting. Uh, all right, got it. Good luck with that. Francesco, I, I was really curious about uh, Superfluid and understand better what you do, guys. And uh, was one tweet that got my attention that was uh, streaming into NFTs. And I thought, wow, what well, streaming into NFC? So I started to, to check Superfluid. I, I didn't even know that uh, there, there was an Italian founder. And so I, I thought, wow, this is really interesting. And um, let me understand first, and also for people maybe not familiar with Superfluid, well, what do you do exactly? Yeah, so Superfluid is a DeFi protocol that allows people to stream uh, crypto assets. So... Streaming basically means transferring money from one account to another over time. So you start a stream and then basically your assets will start transferring from your account to a counterparty account every second without needing to you know, click, click a button a number of times. It's completely automatic. So you make right. one transaction and then the funds start streaming to the counterparty. Got it. So it's sense? basically from one wallet to another wallet. Exactly. So you make a transaction and this connects the wallets and then you hands off and the money just streams forever. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Question number one, if I send you something from my wallet to your wallet and mm -hmm. I send it, for instance, on Ethereum blockchain, immediately there is the flag like, Gas fee, gas fee. You know, everyone say, "Oh my God, gas fee! Wow, why they're so high?" And uh, Vitalik say, "No, it will be better with Ethereum too. Whatever yeah. with the merge, the purge, the fruge, the purge. I don't know when, but 
at the moment is not. So uh, are you using Ethereum as a blockchain? And if yes, how do you solve the gas fee uh, problem? So we are using a number of different blockchains. So Superfluid is available on, on different blockchains. We're not currently on Ethereum. Uh, but what's uh, what I'd like to explain is that Superfluid um, avoids this problem in a slightly different way. So right. when you if you think of a recurring payment, right? So imagine I want to pay you every hour, right? Yeah. Normally, what you would do is make a transfer every hour. And every exactly. time you make that transfer, you have to pay gas. Yes. The way Superfluid works, what I'm doing when I make a transaction is basically setting a pipe between my account and yours. Once I've set the pipe, the money will flow through the pipe completely automatically. So mm -hmm. you only pay gas the first time. So when you set the pipe, you pay gas. Afterwards, the money flows on its own. So you only pay gas once. And what this means is you can send money forever paying a fixed amount of gas at the beginning. Wow. So it's, it's very useful for things like uh, a salary, right? Or renting a property or um, signing up to a service, right? A subscription, because effectively you sign up and then you can forget about it. You know, you walk away, it keeps paying it forever. Right. Uh, uh, of course, until there is money in your original world. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a dream. You know, like I said, <laughs> I like, pay myself. Like there is alchemy in the DeFi world that say that the loan that repaid itself, which is a very fascinating. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, what's the reaction from banks or, I don't know, Visa, MasterCard, I think Stripe, PayPal, because if I want to pay every time, there is a fee. Yeah, so the, the business fee. model is built on, I charge you every time. And if it's only once, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, what's their reaction? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so for now, uh, the people we've spoken to are intrigued, right? So they're like, oh, what is this? You know, how does this work, right? How can we, how can we, make sure it doesn't ruin our business, <laughs> right? We'll see, you know, it, I think our technology is, is still quite, quite early, right? So we'll see how long it takes before we can, we can compete with Visa. But uh, what I can say is, I definitely think in the future, most payments will go through web-free rails, right? Most payments will be using uh, some sort of cryptocurrency, probably a stable coin, and they will use crypto. And if you're, if you can send money every second without paying any fees, you will, right? Yeah, it's definitely. just a lot better than paying a 3% fee every once a month, right? Which has fraud, which has uh, transactions that fail, you know, not enough money in the account, overdraft fees, you know, all sorts of problems, right? The, the beautiful thing with streams is that it's not just that they, they go on their own, but also that they're very granular, right? Mm. Like if you think of your, uh, I don't know, your your Netflix membership, or well, maybe that's a bad example, but let's think of something bigger, your rent, right? Yeah. Your rent maybe is, I don't know, 800 pounds a, a month, right? You need 800 pounds. There's one day of the month where you need 100, 800 pounds or you're out, you didn't pay, right? Yeah. With streaming, because you pay a tiny bit at the, at the time, right? You have a lot more control, right? So if you don't have 800 pounds, you only have 500, you can still keep paying, right? You have more time to get all the money you need. So it's a lot, a much better system because it gives you a lot more uh, capital efficiency and control over the money you use. So I think in the future, we will get paid like this. We will pay all our biggest expenses like this. Businesses will want to get paid like this as well. So that, that's what we're working towards. So I, I'm thinking immediately some about some big Italian companies that pay at 240 days. <laughs> after 240 days, you know, and then you call yeah. them after 240 days and say, did you pay? And they say, uh, yeah, uh, we paid. You say, but I, I, where? Where are the money? Well, they will come, but... But we are in the digital age, you know, and you wait and wait and wait. The other thing I was thinking is that I can get 
get my money, if I work for you, for instance, I can get my money every day, every hour, every second. I can see my little wallet and I see yeah. three pounds. You see the number go up. <laughs> so we're, that's pretty we're cool. We're paying some of our team like that. It, it feels great. I mean, you, you open your wallet and the number is going up, 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 up. You know, it's great because you, the reason it's great, right? Imagine uh, I'm your employee, right? Yeah. You're paying me in a stream. Now, I wake up in the morning, I open my wallet, stream is stopped. I'm not working for you anymore. You know? That's a good point, I, yeah. I'm, you're from Italy, right? You know what I mean. You I, work know, for I know what you mean. <laughs> they pay you, you keep working, they still don't yeah. pay you, and then, yeah. you know. But don't worry, point, now I, I give a call, don't worry, don't yeah. worry, but you keep working. You know these stories in Italy where the state is slow at paying, and then they claim the taxes that of they sh- that they should have paid you for right yeah. so you have to in pay the next, for the next year exactly <laughs> and then and then companies close because they can't pay the taxes because the government didn't pay them the invoices in the first awesome. place right yes. all of this stuff forget it right here we're talking about getting paid for every second of work so there's no counterparty risk anymore and that's i, I, love uh, it. I wonder history. francesco if is is it too efficient that people will say, no, well, let's government, we prefer, you know, or big companies, let's, let's do it, you know, with time, you know, probably uh, until the market force these companies or this government to yeah. use that, that system. But as soon as people start to understand that there is this opportunity, I mean, I, I immediately want to be paid like that. I don't want a different system. I want to be paid like that. And, um, and it's very... I, I really love the fact that it's not only with my employees, but also I, if I work with a company and, uh, you know, I, I maybe I, I sometimes I have uh, com- uh, collaborations with, with companies for branded content or stuff like that. Not much, but sometimes I do it. And um, I don't know, I already do videos, content, and they'll pay, you know, in 30 days, in 60 days, in 90 days. So I don't know, maybe they will, maybe they not. Maybe they, yeah. you know, COVID hit and they call you and say, um, we have a problem, let's, let's think about it in three months, what do you do? So yeah, totally. I love it, yeah, I, I love mean, it. Counterparty risk is the biggest thing, right? In all business relationship, it's all, it's all about risk. So if you can minimize that risk, if you can eliminate it in cer- certain circumstances, it's, uh, it's a very big deal. What, what's the business model for you guys? Uh, because you cannot charge every, every, every yeah. time, which, which was the classic business model so far. And so Stripe, I think, is a $100 billion company, probably more. And, um, and they charge you every time. Um, so yeah. how, how does it work? So Superfluid is not Stripe. Uh, we're, we don't want to be Stripe. Uh, we're not Visa. We're not uh, a bank, right? Superfluid is a technology company. Superflu- so Superfluid Finance is a technology company that is currently building the Superfluid protocol. And the Superfluid protocol is a set of smart contracts that live on the blockchain. Like we are not providing financial services. And this is important to clarify because we don't have the same cost structures of a financial um, institution. We are not a financial institution. We don't want to be a financial institution. We don't hold user funds, right? We don't charge users fees. The way Superfluid works is uh, very much uh, the, the same way a lot of protocols work, right? A protocol it's is like a, a theory or more. Yeah. Exactly. It's a set of rules uh, that uh, define behavior, right? Now, what we expect to see, and we are starting to see, it's very exciting, Our, um, our protocol to uh, build services on top that they do charge for, right? right? So well, there's an application in our ecosystem which allows you to send a stream to buy uh, in dollar cost averaging fashion, right? So imagine you send a stream of dollars and you buy Bitcoin every second. Right. Right. So this kind of service exists and they charge a fee, right? They are providing a very specific service on top of the protocol and they charge a fee, right? So I think there will be a lot of applications, even like Stripe, right? Maybe like Visa that's uh, built on top of Superfluid providing some value add, right? Maybe some sort of insurance, maybe it's some sort of marketing uh, service, right? And they will charge fees, right? So I don't think we're gonna get to a world where all payments don't have fees necessarily, 
But I do think companies will have to justify their value add a lot more clearly, right? I see, so, I see. Superfluid basically as a protocol build a, a tunnel between me and you. And in this tunnel, I can channel in um, information basically uh, without money. Well, so funds, money. Assets, yeah, yes. because I thought money is information. So like funds and uh, yeah. a stream of, uh, of money. So uh, do you have a, like a, there is a token or uh, how, how the no. community can participate? No, it's not a token yet. We don't have a token. Um, the community can participate by joining our Discord, which is discord.superfluid.finance. And in this Discord, you'll find a ton of people building uh, things. Uh, it's a, it's a great, uh, it's a great discord, very, um, kind of, there's a lot of creativity. There's a lot of good ideas happening there. There's a lot of, uh, builders. So it's very exciting for that, uh, for that reason, for me, um, in terms of, uh, other kinds of participation, you know, we're, we're hoping, uh, further in the future, we will be able to onboard more community members to help us, uh, you know, govern the protocol. And this is something we're we're working on. Uh, we're very excited to you know increase our decentralization, and uh, you know we'll we'll talk more about this this year for sure. It's going to be one of our focuses. Interesting. And um, what's the size of Superfluid at the moment to give a context of um, how many people are working on it? Um, what, what's the general um, size of the the, the protocol also? So our team uh, is uh, 14 people right now. The protocol is is on two networks. We're about to deploy. Some community members are, are going to deploy on two new networks uh, very soon. And these are Arbitrum and Optimism. So we're very excited to kind of support Ethereum uh, layer twos. The number of users in the protocol is hard to, like, as you know, in crypto, it's very hard to say who is a user who is yeah. a bot, who is, you know, I don't know. It's impossible to say, but there have been uh, probably at this point about 100,000 different addresses that have awesome. touched the protocol. Um, of those, there's a lot of teams, as I said, paying salaries. So we're very excited about that use case. There's a lot of people uh, using it to uh, DCA, to invest every second uh, into assets. And interestingly, there's a lot of people that do those two things. So they receive their salary and then they invest part of the salary into Bitcoin, right? So imagine these tunnels we were talking about, right? So you have a tunnel coming towards you with, I don't know, $3,000, right? Every second you get a tiny bit. And then you have a tunnel going out with $1,000 buying Bitcoin and, and you get the Bitcoin back continuously as well, right? Does that make sense? That's interesting because a big uh, issue in human history, when people were talking about investing money, saving money was all right, get, you know, 10%, 20%, 30% of what you earn and save it automatically. And people say, but how can I make it automatically? Like this is automatically. And you can decide maybe you buy Bitcoin, you can invest in an index fund or whatever you want to do. So yeah. it, it's really it, interesting. It's automatic. And one thing I really like to stress is that it's, fully non-custodial, right? We're not, um, because there are banks or fintechs that offer the service that when you get your paycheck, they will invest part of it, right? But they are doing it. They are doing it for you, right? Yeah. They are an intermediary that is taking your funds and putting them in places for you. In this case, this is completely self-custodied. You are, you are opening the stream to invest your money. Right. Nobody can do this for you. So it's completely in your control. Right. And I think that's it's important because now, you know, obviously there's more and more people joining the Web3 movement. But it's important to remember that self-custody is where this all started. Right. It's bringing yep. back responsibility to yourself. But it's not good enough to give people responsibility. We also need to give them the tools to do the same things that they used to do in traditional finance. Right. Otherwise, they won't use crypto, right? It's a worse experience. So we need to make sure that as people join uh, the web free ecosystem, they get the same level of uh, experience they would get using traditional systems. Yeah. What about NFTs? What, what is this streaming into NFTs? How does it work? So, okay. So Superfluid is a protocol, 
right? It's a very, very simple set of rules that allow these kinds of streams to happen. Now, when you can stream money from one account to another, you can create rules whereby the account you're streaming to can change over time, right? So let's make an example of a business. I'm a business, I have some sort of SaaS product, right? Um, where people subscribe to my service and pay me every second because it's web free, they use Superfluid, they pay you for every second instead of paying you once a month. Now, all this money is coming to one account, but now I wanna sell my business. Now, the simple way would be I call all my clients and I say, hey guys, you gotta close your stream and open it to this new account, right? You have to open a, a stream to the new owner of the business. But what, what we enable, uh, for example, this is the first example I'm gonna make is to tokenize the business. So your entire business's cash flow is an NFT. So someone else can come and buy your entire business and you can just transfer that NFT to them and they will receive all the streams immediately. Right. right. So we use the ERC721, right? The NFT standard to wrap businesses, cash flows, subscriptions, all of these things can become tradable assets, right? Um, which basically means it's an NFT, right? But not in the sense that it's a, a picture of a cat, right? It's a, an NFT in the sense that it's a unique on-chain tradable asset, right? And maybe it does have a picture of a cat as well, right? But that's an extra. Um, there are some people in our community that are building uh, more fun experiences. So there are some projects where you can buy an NFT of a dog, for example, and it has attached the stream of money. So by buying the NFT, you get you get some of the money that you paid to mint back, right? There's another project that is building an application with uh, with plants. So it's a plant NFT where you buy a seed and then you have to stream into it so that the seed grows into a plant and then a bigger plant. And uh, they're donating part of the money to uh, some uh, NGOs working on the environment uh, space, right? So there's a lot of different things you can do, right? Ultimately, streams are recurring payments that are native to Web3. So anything yeah. that would, you could do with a recurring payment in the traditional world, you can now do in Web3 using streams. Um, let, but, let me see if I understand. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you an example. I write uh, a new book. Let's say that I write a book with uh, a Web3 publisher that understand what Web3 is. Not easy at the moment, but let's say that I find one. So the publisher pays me money for the book. Uh, we establish a stream from his wallet to my wallet, but I say, I want you to stream in, in my NFT, in an NFT that wrapped Uh, that wraps together, wraps the, 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 the yeah. cash flow basically that I receive from you. So the money is coming from the publisher. I get an NFT. In this way, I've created an asset. I could go on the market and say, look, do you want the revenue from my book? Okay, it's there, for instance. Or I could say, all right, now I will sell my NFT collection and I will channel, I will create another stream from my NFT to the an NFT of my token holders, for instance, and they will get 20% of the stream. Yeah. Is, is also something like that, like a chain? You can do all of these things, exactly. So you can- uh, I love it. I gotta do this. Oh my God. I mean, this is, this is web free, right? You are now able to create financial assets on your own with a no code interface, you can create financial assets, right? Now, what we are doing is bringing cash flows. So now you can create financial assets that are backed by business cash flows, right? right. There was a, a project in a hackathon uh, recently, which basically allows you to uh, create an NFT, which, um, which basically people can, can buy from you. And what they get is they get 20% of your salary. Yeah. And then that has an, this NFT has an expiry. So basically they get your salary for say, um, you know, two months and they pay you basically, um, a, it's, a, it's like a loan, 
right? They're giving you a loan against your future salary, right? I see. So here I see. We, we, do you see what I mean? We have an individual who is creating their own uh, salary backed loan completely on their own. Like this is, again, this is why I love web free because it's empowering individuals to do things that before you needed financial institutions to do, right? Like it's, that's revolutionary. Classic question, Francesco. I imagine everyone asks you the same thing all the time. So what about regulation in all of this? Uh, sometimes I, when I hear, I don't know, when, when I watch Michael Saylor interviews, it's very um, interesting and inspiring on Bitcoin topic. And it's very uh, cautious about um, other tokens or, or other crypto activities that could become um, securities and then uh, a, a stronger regulation probably will arrive. Uh, and also, if I can create my, let's say, financial asset, how the end user is protected. So there, there are all of these concerns. What, what's your yeah. take on that? So my take is that we're definitely very early and everybody engaging uh, with cutting edge technology even financial technology should be very careful. That's the first thing. And, and also you must know that it doesn't matter how careful you are, right? You could still lose funds. And that's important. And that's the first step because if we start from the premise that users shouldn't ever be at risk, then you're basically saying we can't, we should stop building because everything has risk and there's no way to protect from all of that risk. And that's been the approach by most regulation in the traditional finance sector, which is the reason most people aren't exposed to finance, right? People are not allowed to engage in most financial activity because of regulations which are meant to protect them. Now, I believe in education over regulation. I believe in good design over you know, regulation which stops people from accessing financial opportunities. But I also understand that saying we should educate people takes a lot more time and is a lot harder than saying we shouldn't do anything, right? People shouldn't be allowed to touch this stuff, right? It's radioactive, stay away. That's a lot easier of an approach for a politician to say this stuff is dangerous, you know, it's going to blow up in your face, you'll lose all your money. That's a lot easier than trying to understand it and explain it. But at the same time, we know that there's a huge opportunity in expanding financial education. And, you know, the, the politicians who are able to understand that opportunity and bring it forward will be the ones that, you know, actually take their countries in the right direction. And different countries have different approaches to this. And I'm looking forward to a future where some politicians are brave enough to do this. But I'm also very pessimistic because I come from Italy. <laughs> so uh, I know what uh, bad politicians look like. Um, so what I can say is, you know, we have to hope that people will be able to take this responsibility and people will be able to educate themselves and people will be able to build tools that are safe enough so that people can safely engage with these protocols. But um, regulatory pressures are generally trying to avoid risks and keep people away from opportunity, even if it means they you know, will lose a potential you know, huge opportunities, right? I mean... Imagine if we weren't, we hadn't been able to buy crypto, right? A few years ago, right? I mean, it was a huge opportunity financially. Uh, and that was the case in certain countries. So I think it's, um, it's, going to, it's going to be a battle, right? It's going to be a cultural war in a sense. And unfortunately, saying we should deregulate finance is not a very popular thing to say. I don't know if you've ever tried saying that with uh, your friends <laughs> not into crypto. It's not very popular, you know. I can try, but I, I don't think I'll get many views and uh, a lot of applause, I think. Exactly, exactly. It's not very popular. Um, and I think that's uh, a bit problematic because actually 
my opinion, and I'm happy to debate this with anyone, is that over-regulation in finance is what has created all the problems with finance. It's not um, the lack of regulation. It's over-regulation because it's made finance this mystical thing that only you know, institutions and only, you know, people in uh, skyscrapers in New York and London can touch and everybody else uh, should fear finance because those people are stealing their money, right? Well, actually, you know, financial opportunity is, is the strongest driver of economic uh, growth and, you know, social mobility that there is, right? Like scaring poor people out of financial opportunities is literally the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I have some very strong opinions on, the, on oh, this. Interesting. Uh, and also, I mean, financial education is the number one um, asset that you, you should build, I think. And uh, absolutely. I, absolutely. I think countries like, like our dear Italy, I mean, the, they, there is not much there. So people, they, they don't know about uh, financial education. They don't know what to do. And so they just go to the bank and say, what should I do? And the bank That, does a bank really have your best interest in their mind? I don't know. I have my doubts. So definitely, I, I think uh, things will change and will be very interesting to see what happens. What, what's next uh, for uh, Superfluid? Um, um, if we meet in a couple of years for uh, Pandoro <laughs> during, <laughs> during Christmas, uh, what, what do you think is... Uh, what would be a great result for you to have achieved and, and how do you see the space uh, in 24 months? So I think in the next 24 months, we're going to see, I think we're going to see gas as a, as a problem being um, not a problem anymore. Like I don't think we're going to talk about gas or scalability as a limitation anymore. Yeah. Um, so I think that's going to mean that we are effectively able to do anything, right? We can build anything. Scalability is not an issue. We can, you know, um, we can create any number of financial assets. We can, you know, uh, build any number of NFTs, right? All these things that we've always talked about uh, will actually be possible technically, right? Well, at the moment, they're still very difficult technically, right? So there's a lot of work that we still have to do there. But I think in 24 months is a good time frame to imagine some of these problems becoming problems of the past. Um, in terms of superfluid, what I would see as a great success is effectively everyone in the web-free economy getting paid like this. Like my major driver here is improving the way people uh, engage with their workplace. If we can you know, free people from having to trust their counterparties to having to trust their employers to being beholden by their employers, right? We can, we can free people, right? We can give them a lot more um, control over their lives. And that's, that's something that really drives me. At the same time, I think we'll be able to um, bring a lot of opportunities to businesses. We'll be able to build um, a lot of lending and uh, borrowing opportunities built on top of cash flows. That's something I'm extremely excited about. So Um, imagine you're working for a DAO tomorrow, right? And that DAO is paying you a streaming salary and you are able to borrow against the salary to buy a house, right? Yeah. And you can do all of this on-chain without the intermediation of a bank based on your on-chain reputation, based on your on-chain assets, your on-chain employment. Like this is the kind of future that I want to enable because the moment you are free from the bank, it doesn't mean the bank disappears, It means the bank has to work 10 times as hard to get yeah. you as a customer, right? Yeah. Well, at the moment, banks don't have to work at all, right? Whatever they do, you have to use them because the state uh, basically enshrines them as the kind of pillar of our economy, right? So increasing, you know, increasing alternatives is the best way to exert a competitive pressure on existing financial institutions, Definitely. which everybody hates, right? So, you know, there, there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, what else? In terms of um, superfluid, one thing that makes me really hopeful, actually, is a friend of mine who re recently lost his job due to COVID has uh, just started working for a DAO. Uh, he knew nothing about Web3, And right. his first job in Web3 is paid in a stream. 
Oh, wow. That's incredible. That's, that's so exciting for me, right? Th those are the kinds of uh, experiences that we want to enable, right? You leave your job in Web2, you join Web3, you get paid every second. And you have... Well, I think once you experience that, that's it. You don't go back. That, that don't is, go back. The, that's the important thing. Francesco, was so interesting. Uh, good luck for everything. And um, let's keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, let's keep in touch. Let's, let's chat in two years then. I want to um, see oh, how I'm going to do that tomorrow. <laughs> <Thank you>. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good.